welcome to this lecture. We are talking about the plate fin type heat exchangers and <coughs> as we know that uh, pressure drop is equally important parameter in case of any heat exchanger. So, how do we estimate the pressure drop in plate fin type heat exchangers that we are going to study in this like lecture. And say uh, if we look into a typical plate fin type heat exchanger, this has been taken from Case and London's uh, compact heat exchanger test book. You can also have a look into the fundamentals of heat exchangers by uh, Shah and Shekulik. There you will have the detailed uh, description of the derivation of this uh, equations of the pressure drop. We will only look at uh, I mean the final expression of the pressure drop in this lecture. So, here if you look at uh, we have a, a this is a cross sectional view we, 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 we will find that some of the passages are blocked where some of the uh, passages are open and through which the flow will take place. And these are the places through which the flow is taking place <coughs> and it will again come out. So, this is what is the heat exchanger core you can say. So, this is the heat exchanger core and we have this is the entry region where it is the header and this is the other exit region. So, this is where the fluid is moving out this is the entry. So, as you can understand that this flow when it is uh, coming and reaching to this surface or this uh, core, it will find suddenly there is uh, some kind of reduction in the heat transfer flow area. Earlier it was flowing through this area, now it has some reduced area because some of the passages are blocked you may remember that we have talked about the uh, when we talked about the construction of the plate fin type heat exchanger we have alternative uh, hot and fluid layer and when uh, this fluid is flowing through this direction uh, if we look into uh, this uh, you know the 3d uh, view so if it is a plate fin type exchanger cross flow type and this is the side bar for this fluid flow and similarly uh, for this side uh, you can see that this is the side bar. So, this is when this flow is taking place from this end you will find that it is this side bar is a blocked for this flow. So, this flow can take place only if we take this is as the frontal area we will find that almost all a part of a 50 percent or you know some portion of the fluid flow area is blocked for this fluid. Similarly, when this fluid is flowing from this end to this end it finds that only it this passage is available for it but it was coming from this end it was having this much frontal area, but only this much flow free flow area it is having of course, the fins are there fins will also block the passages and so we can say that there is certain kind of uh, contraction in the flow area and uh, on the other hand what will happen on the uh, on the exit end you will find that the flow is suddenly you know getting expanded. So, as a result you know, we can uh, say that we have three components uh, in this pressure drop. One is uh, the core pressure drop between this is the core pressure drop between A and B and this is if we divide it, it into A, B and this is between A and B and this is between 1 and 2. So, we have some kind of delta P between 1 and A and then we have some kind of pressure drop in the core which will consist of 
you know, we will come into that part. And there is uh, another delta p, uh, actually here this, this will be a negative one and this will be minus b by b to 2. So, we have uh, three components in this pressure drop, one is uh, the due to sudden uh, contraction, then we have the core pressure drop, then we have sudden expansion and that it will give some pressure rise uh, in this region. So, here we have pressure drop, here we have pressure drop and here there is some kind of pressure rise. So, that is what is the total pressure drop uh, in case of a plate fin type heat exchanger. So, we have you know some uh, means to estimate the sudden contraction and uh, sudden expansion of this one. And finally, this core pressure drop uh, we will have uh, two terms for those uh, uh, core pressure drop. This pressure drop that is uh, between uh, core uh, in, in the core where it is between A and B uh, the region this A between the region A and B we have this core pressure drop. It will consist of two parts. One part what we call it as uh, the friction uh, press, frictional pressure drop. This frictional pressure drop will have uh, two components. So one is the skin fraction, uh, skin friction, and uh, skin friction, and then you will have also uh, the form drag. These two type of uh, pressure drop we uh, form drag. These are the two type of uh, friction uh, type we will have. The, this is the frictional pressure drop which will have in within this one. Along with this frictional pressure drop, we may have a pressure drop due to that uh, change in rate of momentum and that will be taken into account. So, we finally uh, obtain that there are three components. One is the entrance, one is the exit effect, one is the core pressure drop and this core pressure drop consists of two parts, one is the screen fraction, friction and the other one is the form drag. So, uh, all together you know, what we find it is that uh, we have a, a final expression uh, given by this one, this you will find from any uh, heat exchanger book or by Case and London or by Science Seculic and others. So, here we have this delta P uh, uh, ratio uh, delta P divided by P 1 here this is the P 1 and on this side it is P 2. So, it consists of uh, so many uh, factors uh, here we will try to find out one by one. This is uh, the entrance effect where we have uh, K C plus 1 minus sigma squared. So, we got uh, two new term here one is the K C one is the sigma. Now, this sigma is basically uh, we will uh, find that this is a ratio between the free flow area divided by the frontal area. And this is the coefficient K c which takes account of the sudden contraction. And then we have another term is the this is the rate of change in the momentum or we call it flow acceleration. Then we have the core friction as I told you that it will have both the screen friction and the form drag associated and that will be included within that fraction, friction factor f. So, we will not separately uh, look into the form drag or the skin fraction, both will be taken inside the friction factor f and we have r h, r h is the uh, hydraulic radius and uh, rho 1 and rho 2 are the density at the entrance and the exit end. Then we have uh, the exit effect uh, where uh, we again find two more terms, one is uh, the sigma, another one is the K e. This K e takes care of the exit uh, effect uh, or uh, the coefficient of uh, coefficient of sudden expansion. So, we have now then four uh, terms uh, in the pressure drop uh, correlation or delta P by P 1. Earlier we were looking only into this part 
we have not um, taken care of the flow acceleration or the entrance effect or the exit effect or this flow acceleration we have not uh, encountered uh, I mean in our earlier equation only we were talking about this delta p by p 1 is equals to this. But uh, if we want to have an accurate estimation of the pressure drop uh, then we will have to take account of all this entrance exit effect, but you will find that these effects are very small in, in uh, I mean uh, as compared to the core friction these entrance exit effects are uh, very small. So, now uh, we will uh, look into the uh, this as we have told you that uh, this sigma is the uh, uh, ratio between the free flow area and the frontal area and we define it as A c by A frontal F r. And uh, so, most of the time we have an idea about the uh, what is the frontal area of the heat exchanger and we also know uh, sometimes it is specified you will find that the sigma value will be given and from there we may have to calculate the free flow area or sometimes we have the idea about the free flow area and that two ratio gives us the uh, uh, sigma value. So, uh, we have uh, another term here we have uh, encountered uh, that is equals to the rho m this is we have not uh, I mean this is a mean value this is an harmonic mean of say uh, 1 by rho I mean rho 1 and rho 2 and this is given by uh, rho m how this is re they are related to each other. So, that is why it this friction factor I mean when we are talking about the core friction we are supposed to uh, take uh, this rho value the density of that uh, <coughs> fluid at a mean uh, mean value of the uh, density and that is basically an harmonic mean given by 1 by 2 uh, in this equation given in this relation. So, uh, with this uh, information now we will try to uh, look into uh, a particular problem where, uh, but before going into that problem we need to you know, look into uh, the an estimate of this K e and K c that is the coefficient of uh, entrance and the exit. So, uh, this is this has been taken from the case and London's uh, compact heat exchanger book uh, you can have a look into that. So, here you can see that uh, for a different kind of uh, flow channels this is uh, like a uh, channel this is another channel where we have the flat uh, tubes and this is a closed uh, cell and uh, we have say for the different this is where we have the sigma value on this side we have sigma it is not shown here. This is where we have the sigma value, sigma value for different sigma value we have different k e and k c values. So, we can see that this, this, this whole bunch is for k e the exit effect and this other I mean dotted lines takes account of the contraction uh, coefficient of a certain contraction. Similarly, on this side we have uh, for the certain contraction and this is for the k e. So, as you can see also that we have uh, the coefficients for uh, I mean this k e as a function of r e also we have for different r e values we have uh, different uh, k e and k c. So, not only that we have the sigma on this side we have the k e k c values for different r e. So, depending on whether it is laminar or very very turbulent where you know uh, I mean r e is uh, infinite. So, between this limit we have the values of k e and k c. Similarly, we have for r e infinity at this uh, this one and the other end is uh, the laminar one. So, between this limit uh, this k c will vary 
and between these two limits uh, the Kc will vary for this kind of closed cell and this is for the flat tube where we have this is the uh, K, Kc and K values. So, if we know about the sigma value and if we have an idea about the Re uh, values then we can uh, try to find out the Ke and Kc from this graph and try to estimate how much is the uh, pressure drop due to sudden contraction and sudden expansion. But again as I told you that uh, this constitute or give a very small percentage of the total pressure drop. Okay. So, uh, next we will go to uh, numerical problem here we try to uh, numerically estimate uh, the pressure drop this uh, example I have taken from the Shine Shekulix uh, the fundamentals of heat exchanges and uh, there are certain parameters uh, or the specifications given and we will first uh, note them down and then try to uh, calculate uh, the pressure drop or try to estimate the pressure drop. First of all, uh, for estimating the pressure drop what we need to know what is the pressure I mean the fin specification or the geometric specification. Then we need to know what are the operating conditions like what is the flow rate and etcetera. So, the geometric specification I mean that uh, what are the fin types, what are the fin details and then what we need to know is the frontal area or the length and the width or the height of the heat exchanger then only we would be able to estimate the pressure drop. So, the general idea is that uh, we need first of all the geometric specification of the heat exchanger then uh, we need to look for the uh, need to look for the operating conditions. So, here for this particular one the fin density is given the fin density is given as fin density what is meant by fin density we have already talked about it and this is having 615 uh, fins per meter fins per meter. So, if we have uh, 600 fins, 615 fins per meter, uh, that means we have this kind of uh, fin. Say this is the separating plate. These are the separating two separating plates, and we have this kind of fin. And like this, we have. So between how frequently they are appearing, so that's what is the fin frequency. So from this end to this end this is what is the fin spacing or this is the fin spacing or this will be I mean how many number of fins we have in 1 inch or in 1 meter. So, we have 615 number of fins in 1 meter and thereby we can tell that one fin how much is the distance between this fin to this fin. So, that is what we get an idea about the fin spacing. So, here we have the fin density uh, that is uh, 600 fins per uh, 15. So, we have 615 uh, per millimeter per millimeter we have this one. Then we have the plate spacing that uh, plate spacing B that is equals to uh, 6.35 uh, millimeter. So, we have uh, 6.35 millimeter at the uh, plate spacing. Then we have the fin offset length. So, as we can now understand that this is an offset, uh, this has been uh, given as offset strip fin and for offset strip fin we have uh, one uh, if we look at this is uh, you know this is the top view if we say this is like we have the fin arrangement and this is what we call it as the lens length or the fin offset length this is equals to 3.18 uh, millimeter. And air flow length, so the air flow length L1 this is uh, L, L1 or sorry this is L2 this is uh, L2 this L2 is equals to point 0.6 meter. 
So, the air is flowing in this direction and uh, we have it is traversing a length of 0.6 meter and uh, we have to find out the pressure drop due to this air flow through 0.6 meter of uh, air flow length. Then we have uh, the hydraulic diameter uh, for this uh, uh, passage is given as uh, 0.022383 meter. This is what is the hydraulic uh, diameter. This has already been given and the fin metal thickness that is uh, delta that is equals to 0 0.15 meter uh, sorry millimeter and uh, as you can understand that if we are using a thicker fin the pressure drop is going to be higher. And uh, we have also been given uh, the free flow area as well as the, the frontal area. Uh, I mean we have already learned about that the minimum free flow area AFF or here in this one we have defined is as FF or AC that is equals to 0 0.1177 uh, then meter square and the free flow area by the frontal area uh, that is sigma uh, is equals to 0 0.437. We have these values uh, given for the construction or the geometrical properties. Now, we need to look into the operating uh, conditions. So, in the operating conditions we find that uh, the volumetric flow uh, rate is given as uh, 0.6 meter cube per second. This is the volumetric uh, uh, flow rate V dot of air uh, V dot I am sorry V dot of air uh, is uh, given as 0.6 meter cube per uh, second. Then we have uh, it has already been estimated for us the Reynolds number uh, 786 otherwise you know we had to uh, calculate this one uh, from the uh, geometry. And uh, the fanning, fanning friction factor that F has already been estimated for us 0 0.0683 this is the fanning friction factor. The inlet pressure uh, P1 is known as uh, it is 100 and 10 kPa uh, kilo Pascal. Then we have the inlet temperature uh, T in is uh, 4 degree centigrade whereas, the exit temperature uh, this is equals to 194.5 degree centigrade 0.5 degree centigrade and the gas constant the R the gas constant for air has been given as 287.04 joule per kg Kelvin. So, these are the parameters what are given for us. So, uh, based on this information now we have to calculate the pressure drop. So, first of all what we need to you know, do is that uh, uh, as you can understand if we look into our pressure drop expression we have both Ke, Kc then sigma then we have the different densities rho 1, rho 2 and P 1 is already given. So, if you now then uh, try to uh, I mean in our uh, hand we have all the uh, parameters known to us we have to calculate uh, them one by one. So, If we look into uh, this, uh, we have uh, row 1, we have to estimate, we have to estimate the row 2, then we have to estimate row m, then we need to look at the g or the mass velocity, then we need to have a look into the k e, then we have k c and the sigma. So, now as you can understand that we have already been told about this uh, sigma, it has already been given K C K E we have to estimate based on this uh, uh, sigma values. So, depending on the sigma values and the R E value we have to estimate uh, this uh, K E and K C 
and then we have to estimate row 1 and row 2 and based on this row 1 and row 2 we will uh, estimate this uh, 1 by uh, row m as 1 by row 1 plus 1 by row 2 is equals to 1 by row m. So, from there we will calculate the row m and then we have to uh, estimate g. We have been given about uh, the uh, mass flow rate, uh, the volumetric flow rate is given. So, from the volumetric flow rate we will multiply it with the density appropriate density to get the mass flow rate and we also know we have already been told about the uh, free flow area. So, we can estimate the value of g and uh, then we can calculate the total pressure drop. So, if we look uh, one by one into those parameters now, uh, if we, we will find that uh, rho of uh, the inlet uh, can be estimated as a function of, uh, I mean if we assume it to be an ideal gas, we can use the uh, PV NRT relation. So, this is P air in the by uh, R T uh, A inlet. Uh, so, you have to convert this A into uh, the Kelvin and accordingly this will come out as 1.3827 kg per meter cube. So, this will be the density of the air at the entry. Then we can similarly calculate the density of air at the exit and we will have to assume some kind of pressure drop, but we do not have the pressure drop idea, but uh, it is uh, I mean we need an assumption at this point and we will assume that uh, the pressure drop is not substantial. So, that you know we will use the same pressure drop relation I mean that uh, 110 kilo Pascal and then later on we have to uh, rectify ourselves if we are getting really a very large pressure drop. So, uh, uh, we will uh, put this value of 110 uh, kilo Pascal here and this R value already we have told the temperature is already known. So, accordingly we will be able to find that this is coming as 0 0.8195 kg per meter cube for the uh, density of the exit air. So, based on these two values uh, of rho inlet and rho exit, we can then calculate the rho m. This will come out as 1.0291 kg per meter cube. So, this would be the mean density and then we have the g, g can be estimated from the volumetric flow rate multiplied by rho at the entry and then we have the free flow area as we have uh, estimated that already it is given. So, from here we would be able to calculate the g value or the mass velocity 7.086 kg per uh, meter square per second. So, that is the unit and uh, for the uh, Reynolds number given, we can try to estimate the uh, calculation, I mean we can estimate K e and K c. So, the figures that we have given uh, are shown there, uh, from there you would be able to find out that, that K e is coming as 0 0.33 and this K c is given as 0.31. So, then we put uh, this all these parameters now are known to us. So, accordingly we can try to find out that delta P by P 1 and this will come out as 0 0.01536. So, we can find that uh, the pressure drop is uh, 1.69 kilo Pascal and that is uh, not really a very, I mean uh, it is not, on, it is only about 1.5 percent of that total inlet pressure. So, that the assumption that has been made uh, in our calculation that uh, the exit pressure is not really very different from the inlet one uh, is valid and we can uh, 
I mean use uh, that assumption for we, we do not need any separate uh, uh, iterative calculations uh, to uh, repeat this one or uh, to estimate the exit pressure drop. So, this is how we uh, calculate the uh, pressure drop in a flat fin type erection gear. So, uh, we have already talked about it. Uh, thank you for your attention.